week. Hello, welcome to another Mr. Beat Bike video, and this one's a little bit different insofar as it's a part three, and hopefully the last part <laughs> of getting this new old stock um, C7 up and running. Uh, it's been quite interesting, I suppose, um, insofar as it's had quite a few interesting issues, but um, one of them, I mean, I'm still struggling a bit with this lacing and unlacing. As you can see, I do have to help it. But you can hear that I still haven't properly um, lined up that gear uh, on the capstan, the, the actual capstan pulley. Uh, lacing. You can hear the squeak from that motor still, uh, which isn't helping either. And uh, we do have rewind issues. Actually, push this, give it a helping hand. So, yeah, and then we do have fast forward is fine. But rewind is a struggle. Uh, so we'll look at that. And um, I seem to have an issue. I set the clock um, and ran the machine for several hours. Um, playback and it was absolutely solid. Absolutely perfect. Really pleased with that. But um, I found the clock was running fast. It was sort of over two hours. It had gained about 10 minutes. So we'll check that. Um, I'm sort of intrigued to find out what was going on there. I'm still not overly pleased with these buttons. Some of them are, they're just not quite all the same height. And I know I sort of tried those new switches and like I said I don't think I'll be using them again I'll, I'll just be using the normal sort of right height uh, button type tack switches and do them diagonally across that seems to work um, really well to be fair so yeah I mean if if they make the straight across switches with um, the right height because they're only available in two heights at the moment, then I might actually maybe go to those. But at the end of the day, I'm still putting wire on, and I suppose they look a bit better. But yeah, I'd, I'd just go for the tacks, I think. And uh, I do actually have a video showing that in the C7 um, playlist, so have a look for that. Um, because it doesn't look great, but it works really, really well. So, yeah, there we go. So, um, first thing I think I'm going to do, uh, let's check these caps. Um, these were the capacitors that I changed in part two. And uh, I didn't have time to actually put them on the tester and, and see if they, well, how they uh, performed. My guess is probably they're going to be okay, but is it age? Or is it um just in use that makes them break down and quite honestly because they were failing so early on in their in the machine's life um like the c7 c5 and uh, c6 it's it, it, they're just not that great but uh, let's test them anyway um let's see what uh, 40 plus years has done to them and uh Obviously, no real voltage <laughs> across them. So, uh, yeah, let's crack on. So, the 0.47 first. Ooh. <laughs> it's not great, is it? It's not a good start. ASR is 8.3 ohms. I mean, it's not... Nah, it's not great, is it? So, 
that's that. And uh, this one is one microfarad, 25 volts. Yeah, it's just not really great at all, is it? So age, obviously, hasn't been kind to these. This is a point one. Yeah. Point two two. And then this is this is the point one. So see the smaller smaller size. Gosh. <laughs> yeah. They're just really poor capacitors, and the later ones were better. Um, I, from what I understand, these are the first um, capacitors from um, when Sony took over the Sanyo factory that made these capacitors, and they were terrible. Yeah, look at that. That should be, what should that be? 0.33? So, yeah, you can just see they're just well worth changing. So that's that was a good call. Um, I mean, yeah, you, you would. You just need to change these, these caps. And, uh, yeah, brilliant. Let's crack on. So let's have a quick look at this rewind issue. And I just think if I take the uh, top loading system off and... We actually have a look at what's going on. Could be the belt. Um, could be the idler. I uh, just had a quick look at the idler. And it looks to be a bit white. Uh, all the rest seem fine. So, but we'll see. And disengage that. go so that's rewind idler and it's got sort of well I don't know it's got just a bit of white on it it's not grease or anything I mean all the rubbers are really really good um, I might be tempted oh no well maybe not not the greatest thing to do, but I might just put just a smear of rubber renew on there on each of the, the idlers just to uh, sort of, if you like, rejuvenate them. So they've not lost any of the the sort of the diameter of the, uh, the tyres because they've never been used. So just a little bit just to rejuvenate the rubber might not be a bad idea, to be fair. Uh, but my goodness, it's just so lovely. It's so new. Um, so, yeah. I'm just checking that grease. And it, it, grease is actually fine. Sort of what's, what I'd expect when it was new. How is this just so good? It's crazy. Um, let's have a look at the belt here because this will give a bit of a clue you can see there's distortion in it where it's been sat but it's absolutely fine and I think with use they will sort of settle down um, maybe I mean they're not going to last that long but like I said I'm going to provide some belts with it so yeah that's that's cool um, so yeah, let's power it on and uh, trick it into thinking the, uh, the tape, um, the carriage is, um, actually down and then, uh, yeah, take it from there. So, oh, already on, um, that's a motor.
Yeah, so that idler is not great. It's actually <laughs> the spool, because I thought it was going to be the spool, but it is the actual idler itself. Uh, now, I do have a genuine Sony new old stock idler, so I'm just going to change the whole thing uh, just because it is this machine. So, uh, yeah. Let's crack on. So, I have one of the two idlers that I have. The old stock Sony ones. Off with the circlip. Should be able to do it with the screwdriver. It's a bit big, really. There we go. Drop that onto the... You didn't say any, see any of that, did you? <laughs> uh, hmm? And and even though it's new old stock, it does actually look a bit second hand. Um, I suppose I could take the tire off, put it on the other. But uh, yeah, let's let's. Let's keep this as a genuine repair. So I'll put this um, circlip back on and uh, we'll try again. The circlip's on, so if I now press that. Oh yeah. Oh gosh, I've got so much torque. Look at that. <laughs> That's just slowing down the heads, trying to stop that. So yeah. Um, I don't know what what's going on with this. It's almost like it's got some grease on it or something. Ah, really weird. What if that was the fault? What was the fault that made it just get put to one side? Wouldn't rewind? I mean, that actually looks quite second-hand in some ways. It's quite shiny. And where's the rest? I mean, there's a bit of contamination on that idler, but the rest all look good. Like I say, I'll give them a quick sort of switch over with some rubber renew. But, uh, yeah, really weird. So, uh, yeah, let's crack on. I still can't get over just how great this deck is. It's just in such superb condition. But uh, that drum, gosh, yes. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, so, I have reassembled um, underneath. And I did remember to put the connectors in. I did inadvertently use one of these screws um, to fix the uh, lacing belt. Um, adjustment, swap that back because obviously I need four for the uh, the carriage, which is where that screw is from. So uh, just have to put this back in, and there is a little bit of alignment um, from the screws, but uh, yeah, it's. Uh, it's not too bad and we can just line that up so I just moved you to a better angle let's put the last of the four screws in not tightening them up and we should be able to uh, of course this is down isn't it No, oh, it is actually laced, of course it is. Uh, okay, so well, let's power it on and I'm going to keep the finger on the eject because um, if this isn't down, I, there's no cassette in there, you've got to keep your finger on the eject for it to eject. Uh, otherwise, with a cassette in or with that pushed down, it will um, 
you just have to press and let go. That's looking pretty good. So let's try cassettes. Well, it's not doing the whistle, whatever it is, the wine. <laughs> and rewind. Perfect. That tire was dodgy, and I'm a bit sort of confused as to why why that that was when all the rest are so good. Um, and like I say, I've cleaned them all, so or like you saw, but uh, yeah, that's that's really cool. Um, so I'm going to set the clock, leave it for a bit, see what happens with the clock, see if it is running fast. It could well be. I, I just couldn't see the clock on my computer <laughs> when I set this, and I set it wrong. But it did seem to be gradually gaining time. Um, like I said, it's about 10 minutes over two hours. So we'll see. But uh, yeah, that's, that's brilliant. Uh, let's just try eject. Yeah, there's there's no squeal from that motor. So I'm, I'm really pleased about that. And... Eject and lace, I forgot about that. So of course I've sorted that out. Much better. So that's great. So yeah, let's get this clock set. Okay, so let's... Um quite reach that uh, so I have to press that keep that pressed down it's a long way isn't it I'm not overly happy with the travel on that 21 and I'm going to set it 2111 now I'm going to set it to 2110 because that's what time actually is so it's running a little bit slow. Uh, actually, if I just press that again, because that resets the, the minutes. There we go, it's just turned 21.11. So, yeah. We'll see how that goes over the next sort of uh, couple of hours or so. So it's a couple of hours on and uh, the clock's fine. So it's not running fast. Fantastic. Sorted of that together and it's been on for that long. And it's been perfect. It's playing back beautifully. Um, it's just great. Except, <laughs> I have no sound. Um, the sound from it, because when I press stop I can hear the, uh, the snow um, from the, the tuner. But uh, yeah, I've got no playback sound at all. And I, I know the head's plugged in because I've got uh, control pulses, uh, pictures locked. So uh, yeah, um, I think I need to take a look on the underside again I just wonder if I've pulled a connector or something but I found out why this machine more than likely was laid up and it's a bit of an odd one because surely it would have been still under warranty I mean I don't know I mean maybe it was an independent or something it, it was a bit weird um, how these things sort of went but uh, I have no sound and um, the machine itself is fine. Um, when I press stop, um, I get sound from the tuner section, so that's all good. And what I am finding as well, um, and obviously the um, AC head is plugged in because I've got control pulses, it's fine, but just totally silent audio. Um, and when I was sort of just like initially just going around and looking at this while it was playing a tape, I did sort of touch around um, the amp and I got noise. So it, there is 
something working. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I assume probably it's in the um, playback preamp. Um, yeah, so let's dive in and have a look. Uh, yeah, let's crack on. Okay, so I think I've made a discovery. Um, I'm hoping this is right <laughs> and that's all it is. Um, but uh, the relay and the playback section, um, when it's not energised, is short across these two sets of pins. And if I put this to voltage, if I go across here, uh, let's see if I can actually get you, so you can see the meter. So, uh, where are we? 12 volts. So there's nothing there. Now if I press play, I now have 12 volts, but, and this isn't really a good thing to do, but <laughs> I'm confident this is right, it's still short, and it's not short on the other side, so that relay is actually faulty, uh, which is really interesting, so uh, yeah, let's crack on, and um, I've got a, a, a scrap board I can nick a relay off. Um, but I'm actually intrigued to see what um, what is wrong with this relay because obviously it's brand new um, insofar as it's, it's got next to no hours on it. So uh, yeah, let's have a look at that. Energy saving products will save money on fuel bills too. Do you say we save money? Good, I need a new coat. Use your free energy saving... Well, yeah, we've got sound back. Um, I took the top off the relay. Got to be free with energy and soft boiled. And it, and it is working. Got to be white and white. It's got to be perfect. But it's got. Yes, it's white. Just yes, not very good contacts. And Could yes, that have been what the original fault was? Um. I don't know what to do. I mean, I think I'll try and... Let's stop it. Yeah, you can see it moving now. It wasn't moving before. And it's popping and clicking. Do I change it? Yeah. Um, I think I'm just going to give it a clean and just see how we get on. Uh, so, yeah, let's crack on. So new relay is in, and uh, let's give it a try. And that's looking pretty good. Excellent. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna put it back together, and uh, yeah, we should be good to go. Let's crack on. Well, we are. Up and running. 
and uh, all good to go. I remember to put those uh, two connectors on when I put it back together as well. Clever me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're all good. Uh, one thing I was wanting to test was the frame. So let's press... Pause and frame advance. And then we've got... That's really cool. I mean, it's never going to be great because it's a two-head machine, but yeah, that's that's working. So we're done. We're finally done. <laughs> uh, been quite a roller coaster this one, um, and uh, yeah, really such a great machine though, and uh, just wonderful to see. It's like working on a brand new machine, which is amazing. So uh, this relay, not too sure about that. Um, it does look like it's not. Um, it's not quite sprung properly, because uh, even when it was working, it would. You'd get like. It, like the contact wasn't very very good and it would sort of um, become choppy the audio so this really is just I guess faulty from new and um, it's a little bit out but uh, yeah anyway we've done it we've got there so I hope you enjoyed this series I have found a new home for this so um, I hope they'll be as pleased with it as, as I am. And uh, yeah, so with that, thank you very much for watching. And uh, a like would be absolutely wonderful. And uh, subscribe as well, because we've got loads more to come. So with that, see you in another video. Bye for now. Ooh, world out there.